performance demonstration of Minuet by Alexander Reinagel from the classical time period. This comes from Alfred's Group Piano for Adults, Book 1, page 34, for you to learn along. Alexander Reinagel composed during the classical time period. It's reported that he was friends with a young Mozart. His music was influenced by Beethoven, Haydn, and Clementi, which you can learn more about Clementi in another video. I'm going to teach you how to play this piece using our musical learning pyramid. I'm going to play it another time. I want you to listen and analyze. Do I hear anything different on the second demonstration compared to the first demo? And I hope you do. enjoyable for me to play perhaps as it was for you to listen as well so we're going to add all of those details articulations voicing phrase shaping to make it sound like a true classical minuet we're going to start with the style and mood to inform all of the other layers of our learning so the style and mood can come from many um, parts of the score the title the musical time period the tempo and stylistic markings so our most of our influence comes from the minuet and Minuet comes from France. It was a social ballroom during that time, especially during the Baroque and Classical era. Composers like Bach and Beethoven loved writing Minuets. So it has a 3-4 time signature. The emphasis is mostly on the first beat. Avoid playing these Minuets too fast as there would be little steps that would occur on every quarter note. With that in mind, we're going to go back down to the rhythm category of our musical learning pyramid. The time signature I mentioned as a 3-4. Look for repetitive patterns, many groupings of three quarter notes. Um, there's five finger scales that are in eighth notes, eighth notes at the end, which are seconds. And the left hand has dotted half notes all the way through. So you could practice this hand separate, use a metronome, tap your foot, count along to get that rhythm precise. We're going to move up into the note reading category. Looking at our key signature, I see one sharp. I go up one half step from the F sharp. I'm in the key of G major. You could warm up on your G five finger scale. Or G full octave scales. You can check out how to play those in another video. Let's keep fine tuning this reading. We're going to look at any kind of landmark notes. I'm going to look at my left hand. Left hand looks like it's nearest to that landmark F in my bass clef. Up a second, I'm on a G. Looks like the only other note I play is down a fourth which is a D. So the left hand is really simple, at least in the note reading. We'll talk about some articulations to make it interesting, though. Just G and D. I never have to move. Keep your hand there. I'm going to go to my right hand. Starting pitch is nearest to a treble C. Up a second. Put my five on that high D. That is my highest pitch I play in this piece. The lowest note appears in measure two, which is landmark G. So it's great. My right hand is in a G five finger scale. My left hand is actually sitting in like a C five finger scale. So they're not precise, precisely in the same position. All right, now that we've got some note reading figured out, let's go into some of the intervallic movements of it. I would suggest you go through this hand separate. Left hand where we talked about is fourths, the right hand thinking the intervals. So I have the repeated notes, down a third, down a third, Here's a pattern, a G scale, you can even mark that G scale. So I'll let you go through and label those intervals and you can practice it thinking that. All right, so let's go into the articulations. This is where it becomes much more interesting and we can make it sound like a dance. The classical time period is known for um, very spirited articulations. So these staccatos, imagine the key is hot, release very quickly off the key. So it's very short, almost like a pizzicato type of sound. That will contrast the slurs like we have in major two. Major four slur. Do some wrist circles there to help that become very smooth and create that crescendo. All right, so let's keep zoom, zooming in. The second measure has a two note slur. It's stylistic to play the first note, the downbeat louder. So I'm going to engage some arm weight down and roll off. I've added a staccato on the second note after that two note slur. If you have so many other staccatos, it's performance practice just to end your slurs in the same manner to match those other staccatos that you have. So let me play that first line for you to hear articulation. Short, drop with arm weight, short, short, and then no staccato. So gentle on that last third of the phrase, lift, short, drop with arm weight, short, bring it back, gentle. So 
careful on those non-staccato notes that you actually sustain them long enough. I've drawn in commas, however, it makes your four and twelve because the phrase, musical idea, ends lift. And that's really a lead-in to the second phrase. So practice those articulations, getting those comfortable. Let's talk about the left hand. You might have noticed on that first performance demonstration, I did not play the left hand in the same articulation both times through. It gives it variety. The first time through, I made it a bit more subtle and um, maybe a relaxed feeling. I played the left hand legato. steps. You could practice that with just even tapping the uh, left hand. Lift, lift, lift. Yes. There's some articulation contrast. You can check out another video to practice those. Get those skills comfortable. Okay, pause it there. You can practice your articulations. Once you're ready to move on, we're going to go into the dynamics. First, we're going to think about the voicing. Which hand would you sing along with? It's obviously the right hand. So you're going to play that louder. Left hand is soft, you could do a silent play. Get that control, and then you can start to play it, but quietly. And even in your own practice, sing along with that right hand so your ears are attuned to that right hand melody. Okay, let's get into some more dynamics. In the second major, I talked about from the articulations, the arm weight goes down. That will serve to give you the day crescendo that I've drawn in. So you can even take your pencil and draw on for every two note slur at major two, six, and 14 and day crescendo louder, softer. Also, when the scales ascend at like major four, we're going to get louder. Same thing at major 12, you can crescendo. Okay, so those are the nuances of, dy of dynamics. Phrases are very repetitive, but it sounds like there's four majors that fit within a phrase. We often call that four-bar phrasing. And if you've ever learned about four-bar phrasing, there's a, a major that we often play the loudest. Typically, it's the third major, sometimes the downbeat of the fourth. But I think in this piece, it's the third major, which is always the phrase goal, which I've drawn in with some blue arrows over those notes. So I've also varied the phrases as we go through. So the first line is going to start medium soft rather than mezzo forte. Mezzo forte for the call. Even louder. So that repetitive phrase could be even louder. It will sound different when we add those articulation contrasts as well. Major nine is going to back off to the softest point of our piece. Imagine the dancers might bow to one another so it would have that natural finishing effect. All right, hopefully you've enjoyed going through that musical learning pyramid to add all of the details to make it sound like a classical minuet. So take your time going through each stage, be patient, and enjoy getting it to that final performance.